Here's another lesson on third declension nouns. This time the stems are going to end in sigma. Now the trick with these is you're not actually going to see this sigma in anything except the nominative singular because the sigma is going to drop out in every single case. Uh, it suffers from what's called an intervocal. It, that, that sigma is a intervocalic sigma, which means that it is a sigma between two vowels. And when a sigma happens between two vowels, it drops out. So the intervocalic sigma drops out. We have two vowels, then contract, and you get something new happening. Now, as far as accents go, the accent, you accent the, the noun before you do the contraction and keep the accent there. So let's take a look at two particular nouns. Uh, one's going to be a model of our masculine and feminine. One will be the model of our neuter. Uh, and then you can uh, try some on your own. So the first, hey, tria race, uh, means trireme. It's technically an adjective, or it comes from an adjective. It, it's modifying ship, uh, but it's a type of, of Greek battleship. Now what I've done here is I've given you the uncontracted forms, so you can see the endings. All right, and if we look at the uncontracted forms, we say, okay, nominative, hey, tria res, taste, tria resos. So there's our stem and our ending, os. Dative, te, tria resi, stem and ending. Tain, tria resa, stem and ending. So the endings are going to stay the same in the uncontracted forms. Same in the plural, tria reses. Tria reson, tria resin, tria resas. Uh, so we've got the uncontracted forms here, and this is the contracted forms. This is what you're going to see in literature. So let's take a look at, at what's going on here. So hey, tria res, okay, it doesn't contract because there's no intervocalic sigma. Tes tria resos. Uh, we need to remove this sigma, and we get eos, and that contracts to tria rus. Hey, tria resi, this sigma drops out. We get epsilon iota, tria re. Tain tria resa, sigma drops out. Epsilon and alpha contract to an eta. Tain tria re. In the plural, tria reses, sigma drops out, and we get tria res. So epsilon and epsilon is going to render epsilon iota, tria res. Ton tria reson. Tone triarone, so the sigma drops out, and the epsilon and omega contract to triarone. Tis triaresin, the only thing that happens here is we don't need to have two sigmas, so one of those sigmas drops out, triaresin. Tas triaresas, uh, tria sigma drops out, and the epsilon and the alpha contract to A by analogy with the nominative plural. Okay. Uh, the other way to think of it is that you might say, well, why can't it be an eta, uh, ace versus ace? Uh, both are possible, but here, by uh, it, again, it's by analogy with our nominative plural. And so that's the uh, masculine and feminine versions are going to follow this. And Socrates, Socratus, Demosthenes, Demosthenus are going to be the same way. So you have to sort of reinsert, when you see this oos as your genitive singular, reinsert a sigma into the stem. This is what your stem will look like. And then you have to contract. So uh, these are third declension. The endings just don't necessarily look like it. Let's like take a look at a neuter. To oros, meaning hill or mountain. Again, I've got the uncontracted here. and the contracted on the right. So to oros, no change. To oresos becomes orus. Right, so our stem, sigma drops out, epsilon, omicron, to orus. Oresi becomes to ore, to oros, to oros. Ta oresa becomes ta ore. Ton oreson becomes ton oron. Tois oresin, all that drops out is the sigma. Tois oresin. Ta oresa, ta ore. So again, the thing to focus on here is when you see a genitive singular, your gen your second principal part ends in us, know that this is a contract. And what has contracted out is an epsilon sigma plus.
plus your ending. So you have to decontract it and then recontract it uh, to find the proper endings.